This is the all new 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. Can it make us forget all about the Challenger? Well, we're gonna check out all the features, take it for a drive, and then put its all wheel drive system to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Dodge is currently in a very weird place. The Challenger is on its way out, but the all-electric replacement is still about a year away. So that leaves a 2024 sized hole in Dodge's lineup. And they're filling that hole in their product lineup with this, the 2024 Dodge Hornet. The formula is simple. Take an Alfa Romeo Tonale, add a bunch of scoops, and make it sound like a Dodge. or at least they tried their best. The model we're testing today is the fastest and most feature-packed Hornet you can buy. It's called the RT Plus. This comes standard with a 1.3 liter turbo engine mated to a plug-in hybrid powertrain. Altogether, it makes a peak 288 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. All-wheel drive is standard across the lineup, as is an automatic transmission. But where the base GT gets nine gears, this RT comes with a six-speed Ison-made unit. The hybrid-only RT also has a dedicated electric motor to power the rear wheels. EPA rates economy at 77 miles per gallon equivalent. This is a combination of the 32-mile all-electric range with the 320-mile total range. With the battery completely empty, look for 29 MPGs combined. Prices you see it here with special hot tamale paint blacktop tech and track packages. Oh, and it also has a sunroof delete credit for a total of 52,305 US dollars, including destination. The Hornet RT has Kony frequency selective damping suspension. This ties into the drive modes to provide the best response for a variety of uses. The track pack also adds a sport button for maximum handling capability. Because this came with the track pack, it gets an upgraded wheel tire package. You're looking at 20 inch wheels, which look amazing. And they're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport all season four radials. I think they look great. Also you'll note because this is a track pack, it has painted red calipers. Yeah. Maximum ground clearance is 8.1 inches, which is actually really good. In terms of cargo space, you do get less than the competition in this class. With the second row in place, you only get 22.9 cubic feet. Fold the second row down for a maximum of 50.5 cubic feet overall. It's important to be aware that if you go with the base GT, you actually get a few more square feet of cargo capacity. I think it's probably because the batteries take up room in the floor, but I'm not sure. For comparison's sake, the newest Honda CRV has up to 76 cubic feet in the back. That is a substantial difference of more than 25 cubic feet overall. Wow. I know you're probably curious about whether or not you can sleep in the back of this little crossover. And I'm just gonna tell you, no, I am not lying down in this vehicle. Two reasons. First off, very small. Second, it's not level. So I can just clearly see this is not a nice setup for that. But let's come on, it's a Dodge. Who's gonna sleep in the back of their Dodge? In the floor here, we do get a fix-a-flat kit and a charging cable because this is a plug-in electric hybrid and you can run it on battery only, or at least mostly on battery only. More about that in a little bit. At this trim level, you also get a 12 volt socket and of course lighting in the back. A okay, second row. How are we? Oh, this isn't too bad. It's comfortable. I got room for my head. It's contoured seats. I got a little pocket right here. If I was driving, this is where I would have my front seat. And I have room back here still. I am six foot one, legs and torso proportionate, if you need to compare. In the middle here, I get vents, which is very nice to see in this category, uh, as well as USB-A and USB-C sockets. And over here, I get a fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. Yeah, very nice.
Okay, what do we got up here? So this actually really reminds me of the Stelvio Quadrifolio, which I love. That was such a fun car. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. Now this does remind me of an Alfa Romeo because of course it is based on the Tonale and it's not very different from its European cousin. We get the steering wheel, which just is amazing. And then right here we have an E-Drive mode button because this is a plug-in electric hybrid. And that lets us toggle between the different drive modes. Uh, hybrid, electric, and E-Save. Uh, E-Save allows me to drive mostly on petrol so that if I want to save the electric for later, I can do that. And my all-electric range right now is showing about 31 miles. You get 31, 32 miles depending on how you drive. The interior, very nice actually. This plastic's a little bit on the cheap side. Some of the switch gear don't feel absolutely stunning to my fingers, but I think overall, this is actually really nice for the class. I like it. I think it's, it looks great. The center cluster here is a fully digital display. I like the design. I think the fonts, the graphics, they all look just amazing. And I can quickly toggle between all sorts of different uh, options here with a little quick click on the steering wheel. Very nice setup. Uh, we, of course, have adaptive cruise control integrated into the steering wheel. That is included in our tester, of course. And if you hadn't noticed, this steering wheel is wrapped in leather, and it feels just amazing on my fingers. The seat is also super comfortable. It's wrapped in Alcantara, and it has power adjustments in addition to heat. Now, down here, we have the transmission selector. This is, of course, a six-speed unit. This is, of course, connected to a PHEV electric setup. And the all-wheel drive system in this actually has petrol and electric running the front wheels, and there's a dedicated standalone electric motor powering the rear wheels. It's very similar to what we see on like uh, the Toyota hybrids that have all-wheel drive, such as the Prius and the Highlander. They both have a similar kind of powertrain setup. Uh, switch gear, I love the fact that we have physical buttons here for a lot of the aircon. Up here we have a lot of features uh, about the vehicle. We can look at driver profiles, we can look at the hybrid electric setup, uh, basically charts and graphs, all that kind of stuff. Of course it also supports XM satellite radio. Uh, we can double up with aircon up here if we want to have more precise control. There's also navigation built in, which is interesting. Click on it, what am I going to get? Anything? Yep, there we go. Took a moment to load there. And then of course we also have vehicle setup. Everything from controls to accessory gauges. And that's a very Dodge thing, isn't it? To put accessory gauges. Here I can see turbo torque as well as uh, transmission oil and 12 volt battery status. So that's cool. Put it in reverse, it turns into a surround view camera with a backup and I can select individual cameras if I want. And then we have one more button, which is sport. And that modifies not just the overall performance of the powertrain, it also adjusts the suspension because this is equipped, of course, with the Kony adjustable adaptive suspension, which is pretty cool. In terms of safety, this does actually have a pretty good package. We have collision mitigation, we got blind spot warning, we have rear cross traffic alerts, you know, all the stuff you would expect. And then this also at this trim level has adaptive cruise control with lane centering. Okay, well, I think we've covered all the basics of the interior here. Let's take it for a drive. Okay, here we go. So the Dodge Hornet here is an interesting vehicle, and it's not just because it's based on the Alfa Romeo Tonale. Uh, that alone is kind of interesting because Alfa Romeo makes really fun cars to drive. Uh, but the fact is, is that this, the most high performance version you can get, is actually a plug-in electric hybrid. That's interesting. So this vehicle can drive up to 32 miles in all electric. If you're just running errands around town, you probably never need to use any gas. And that is really cool. Now, Dodge here, they've actually harnessed this whole PHEV powertrain to also give it all-wheel drive and higher performance. It has a dedicated electric motor in the back, it has another electric motor in the front, plus it has the small little 1.3 liter turbo, and then all together you actually end up with a pretty good amount of horsepower and torque, more than you would expect in a vehicle of this size. 
but is it enough to really make this a thrilling drive? Or is something lost in the translation from Italian to American? To answer that question, I'm going to start with a number of 0 to 60 runs, and I'm going to do it in all the different modes so we can see what really, you know, what is the difference? Does it, is all electric really that much slower? Is hybrid that much faster? Well, let's find out. So for my first test, we're going to do this in all electric mode, and that is the only thing I'm turning on. Let's pull out. And let's see what this does. I also have the little graphic up here to show me which parts of the system are engaged. Three, two, one, floor it. Hey, guess what? It automatically turned to hybrid mode when I floored it. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> so like the other Stellantis products, it appears as though the electric mode and the all gas mode are probably just suggestions. So you can kind of be more of an emphasis towards battery or more of an emphasis towards gas, but you can never truly shut one down to use just that type of power. Unlike Toyota's PHEV products, which they usually tag with a prime trim, uh, those ones you put them into all electric mode and you get all electric. You can go full throttle. It never turns on that gas engine, which is kind of what you want, right? I want to try that again, and this time I'm not going to go wide open throttle. I'm just going to go mostly wide open throttle and see if we can get that electric motor to be the exclusive uh, propulsion. And I have plenty of charge on the battery. It shows that I have 18 miles so far of all electric range available. So let's go ahead and put it back into, change the E-Drive to electric. I'm going to stop here and we're gonna try all electric acceleration. Three, two, one, go. Come on. I'm trying not to go get, get that gas motor on. And, oh, this is not fast. And, oh, come on. 60, 14.2 seconds. <laughs> right. Okay, so now we're gonna do a clean zero to 60 in the hybrid setting. I'm gonna switch the E-Drive mode to hybrid. Come on, it's uh, there, hybrid. I wish that button was more responsive. It is pretty slow to engage when you hit it. So here we are on the straightaway again. We're in hybrid mode and I'm just gonna floor it. And three, two, one, floor it. A little slow off the line. Ooh, then it kicks in turbo hits and 60 and 6.93 seconds. I mean, that's pretty quick. So for the final run, we're going to keep it in hybrid mode and I'm going to turn on sport mode. Plus I'm going to do the boost. So three, two, one, hit it. A little quicker off the line. Oh yeah, I can definitely feel that much quicker and 6.07 0 to 60, which is quite good. Very happy with that result. Making sure we're in sport mode here. And let's try out this performance. Hit it. Yeah, it's got, it's quick. I love that this has the massive paddle shifters and they kind of remind me of the shifter that you get on the Stelvio Quadrifolio. It's basically the supercar version of the Alfa Romeo midsize crossover. And here they are, they look awesome, but, and there's a big but here, after you're done looking and admiring these massive shifters that are stock mounted, and I do like that, not wheel mounted, they're just not as exciting as they are on the Stelvio Quadrifolio. Because on that car, when you're shifting up and you're shifting down, it makes just the most obnoxious pops and burbles. This one, wait, did I even just change gears? I think I did. It's so subtle. It seems to shift gears pretty quickly, but I don't think that this level of performance really, it doesn't justify these massive paddles although they do feel really good in hand. I do like them. 
it just it's a little comical in a vehicle like this i mean it's nice it drives nice it's kind of on the small side uh, the cargo area in particular is very small in this vehicle and beyond just the numbers it's the width that's kind of the issue uh, you just can't put a lot of bags across and that's a kind of problematic this is also one of the first crossovers that i can't just stick my tripod down lengthwise it doesn't have enough length in that trunk space so this is a small crossover uh, don't you know be confused and think that this is like cargo ready take the family out for the weekend kind of car because you might have trouble fitting luggage in addition to your family in this thing however if you're a young professional i i could totally see somebody leasing one of these i'm not sure if you want to own it uh, but i'm sure that there'll be some fantastic lease deals because of course that brings me to my sticking point on this one that you're paying north of 50 grand retail for something like this now, Dodge is known for putting money on the hood, so yeah, I'm sure that there will be discounts available, but it is appealing as a lease option in the 300s. I mean, that's okay. Because when you get into the corners, you're like, yeah, this thing's cool. But now let's talk about the all-wheel drive system here. This is, of course, using a small 1.3 liter turbocharged engine, and it has both a electric motor in the front and then a dedicated electric motor in the back to power the rear wheels. It also has what Dodge touts as torque vectoring. About that. <laughs> it is a brake vectoring. When I'm going into the corner here, like on this bridge, and I lay in the throttle a little bit, yeah, I can kind of feel a little bit of moving around there as though torque is getting vectored, but, but, it's not the proactive power to the wheel type of system. It is a brake based vectoring system. That means that what it's really doing is tapping a little brake on the inside of the corner to help me rotate. It's not actually applying extra power to the outside wheel like the Acura SH all wheel drive uh, or like the dual clutch unit in the back of the Ford Bronco Sport. So it is a less technologically advanced and a less proactive and a less exciting version of torque vectoring. Basically, it's the same torque vectoring that you would get on a Nissan Sentra. Like any hybrid, this vehicle does have regenerative braking. When you put on the brakes, it's going to spool up those electric motors to return power back into the system. You can also set it, like I was saying earlier, as an electric only mode and let's see how that kind of feels. It's quiet. And then when I lift, it goes into charge mode, add power, it goes into power mode, okay. And then we also have the e-safe mode, which this is for using petrol uh, exclusively so that you can save the electric for later if you want to use that for something. So now we're in e-save mode. Let me go ahead and floor it and see if I get any electric. Yeah, it's putting 127 kilowatts out of the engine and 5982 kilowatts out of the electric. E-drive modes, purely suggestion. Now the suspension on this does tighten up when I go into sport mode and I can feel almost every crack on this road and the unfortunate thing is it also makes the interior here shudder even more when i go over every expansion joint every crack and every little pothole on this road lauren now overall i do enjoy driving this car it's a fun little car to drive um, the caveats are just you know typical they're how's reliability going to be it's overpriced out of the box it's a nice car, it's got some good features, but it's probably not gonna maintain value. And I would be lying if I didn't tell you that all the rattles and shakes inside this vehicle didn't cause me to be slightly cautious about recommending it. But we're not done with this review yet. We still have one more thing to do because we are gonna, of course, take this to our Peninsula Proving Grounds to see how well the all-wheel drive system does in a trail situation. Now. I understand this isn't a trail vehicle. It doesn't even have a trail mode, but I'm really curious if that brake vectoring, that torque vectoring that they say is gonna do any good getting us through a modestly easy trail. 
because hey, people in the Northeast and the Pacific Northwest, if you buy something like this, yeah, you're gonna take it up to a trailhead. Now you might not be, you know, going down, you know, the Rubicon or anything like that with this, but you sometimes might have to go through a crosscut to get to your destination. It is not unheard of. So uh, let's see how this thing does. Now that we're on the dirt road that takes me to the Peninsula Proving Ground, we can listen for all the rattles. Yeah, that's not stuff in the trunk. Those are door panels rattling. Not good. Okay, let's line this up and try see if we can get wheels to spin. Now this is a full throttle launch on a gravel road and the whole point of this is to see how much those rear wheels engage in launching us. How much power is going to the back here? Now for setup I am going to uh, let's turn on sport mode. I'm going to also turn off traction control. There's a little button down there. Now everything up there says traction control is disabled. So I have traction control off, I have sport mode on, I'm in hybrid mode, and heck, let's use quick shot too. Can I? In drive? Oh, you gotta be in drive to get quick shot turned on. You can't be in park. Okay, sure. Okay, three, two, one, floor it. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. That's a fair amount of uh, wheel spin. <laughs> For the final test, we're going to take this Hornet through our fun forest. Now this is our easy course. It's really just testing the ability of this vehicle to shift power from one wheel to the other, uh, presumably the wheel without grip to the wheel that has grip, so it can get us through the course. Uh, ground clearance is fine because this is over 8 inches. We shouldn't have any rubbing. Uh, but the one question is, is power distribution. Nothing says that this has any trail capabilities, so this is definitely outside the envelope of what Dodge was thinking of with this vehicle, but let's see what it does. I'm going to turn off sport mode because I don't think we need that. I'm going to keep it in hybrid mode because that should be fine, and now let's see if it can lift us up this steep climb. So look for any wheel braking on the outside. I'm just keeping a very even throttle. Can that electric motor hoist us up? Oh, it's doing it. It's doing it. It does have some trail logic. Okay, that's cool. I feel better about the rest of this now. <laughs> and we even get some trail cam functionality with the screen here. That's neat. Next, right before this dead tree, we're going to dip into a hole. It's going to lift that passenger rear wheel up. Just like that. And now we'll see if we can drive out of this. Interesting is how often it's cutting off the gas engine. It's doing a lot with the electric motors, which is good. Okay, there we go. Got to turn off these sensors. Good, there's a button right there. <laughs> now we're going to tip the other direction quite a lot. <laughs> but it's climbing out of here. That's always the difficult spot. And I'm going to stop, even though naturally you would use momentum if you were really on a trail like this. Uh, but let's really test that rear drive capability. Just going to add a little throttle, smooth. Oh moving. I'm hearing a little ticking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it works. May not be the most dramatic or well, frankly not even the most capable system, but it does have some trail logic to get through tricky situations. I am just throttling right now and it is using that traction control to slowly climb us up and out. Excellent. Nicely done Dodge. 
And now through the final exit, I'm hitting trees, listen for any rubbing. Woo. Very little rubbing. Nicely done. Okay. And there we go. It did it. So that is the 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. It is a fun to drive and surprisingly capable plug-in electric hybrid. Now granted, you're not gonna take it on any really challenging trails, but on the easy trail that we tested on today, it did just fine. Now, regarding the price, you're looking at this going, wow, $52,300, that is a lot of money. And yes, it is. But part of what you're paying for is that larger lithium ion battery that allows us to have up to 32 miles of all electric range. Now, the caveat with that is the fact that it isn't a pure all electric because when you put it into electric mode, it still will go to that petrol motor more often than I would like. Basically, anytime you're accelerating hard. And for me, that's a little bit of a problem. It doesn't feel like it's pure electric when you set it to pure electric. And the reality is, is that not everybody's gonna compare this versus other PHEVs. They're gonna compare them to some of the more popular crossovers on the market, like the RAV4. You can get the fully loaded TRD off-road for 10 grand less than this vehicle. And I already thought that the TRD off-road was overpriced. Spend a couple thousand more and you could actually buy one of the new Toyota Crown hybrids. That is a super fast, very comfortable, feature-rich hybrid. And it's bigger too. It has more cargo room and more room for passengers. So this is just kind of a weird vehicle because it's kind of all electric, but it's kind of an SUV, but it's not really an SUV. It's fun to drive, but it's not really a sports car. So it just, I have trouble really finding where this vehicle fits in today's market. Now, the good thing is that Dodge does have a tendency to put a lot of money on the hood. That is, they have a tendency to offer discounts. And discounted or on a good lease deal, I would absolutely drive one of these every day. I think that the features, the function, the feel behind the wheel, totally worth it. I just won't want to keep one long term for two reasons. Depreciation, because I think they're overpriced, and I'm a little concerned about reliability given its alpha roots and the fact that everything rattles on the inside. <laughs> so that's my look at the new Dodge Hornet RT. What do you think? Post a comment below. Let's chat about it. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here real soon.